crazy night. I mean, we all thought it was going to be close. We all thought that the top three would be bunched and, you know, and the 75% would go to the top three. But a vote separated by just eight votes is really amazing. I mean, we have in the three people that you mentioned about as fractured a sort of GOP field as you can imagine, considering what they all represent. Um, I think the rise of Ron Paul, at least here, and I don't think it's going to necessarily go on nationwide, but this was libertarianism's biggest victory, definitely. Uh, and it reflects a real trend. I mean, the votes that he got among young voters, he was overwhelming majority. About half of all voters under 30 went for Ron Paul. Um, that's a real swell. Obviously, what we saw from Santorum really shows that the kind of, you know, just in-depth retail campaigning can can make it happen. Most of these people went for him in the last week or even in the last 24 hours. And Romney, he got about 50 votes more than he did two, in 2008, so he barely beat himself from four years ago. Uh, people have a long ways to go to yeah. fall in love with Mitt Romney, but, you know, he'll probably in the end prevail. Well, and here was Mitt Romney's reaction last night upon hearing the results. Iowa for the great send-off you're giving to us and to the others in this campaign. Look, I, this is a uh, this is a campaign night where America wins. We're going to change the White House and get America back on track. Yeah, a smile there, clearly pleased uh, with himself. Neil, what was interesting, we're showing here the results where you can see with about 99 percent of uh, precincts reporting, Romney getting 30,015 votes to Santorum's 30,007, a remarkably close race, and Ron Paul again with about 26,000 there, not too far behind. Gingrich further down, Perry Bachman at the bottom. And there, those two are where questions uh, center about the future of their campaigns. Let's hold off on that for one minute, though. I'm curious about the, the, Ron, the Mitt Romney, you know, sort of narrative arc here, because for a couple of weeks it was like, geez, Mitt Romney might actually do pretty well here, and he was coming from behind, and isn't that great? And then you wake up this morning and people go, well, he only got a few more votes than last time and didn't do so well with evangelicals, and, you know, does he really have uh, as much momentum as we hope for, that, for what has effectively come the Republican Party's frontrunner candidate? You know, he did hear what he wanted to do, which was to, it was a defensive maneuver as much as anything. Uh, he really wanted to make sure that he boxed out the people that could threaten him down the road, which is to say uh, Newt Gingrich and Rick Perry, he, uh, he did that. Uh, I think most people acknowledge that down the road the, the two people that were closest to him uh, are not likely to challenge him, you know, two months from now because of his organization and money. So it was, it, not only did he win by eight votes, but, you know, tactically he won as well. And this will probably be his toughest place outside of South Carolina, which of course is coming up in about two weeks, and that's going to be difficult territory for him. Um, but then he's hoping to take Florida, which could be the decider. Yeah. Um, question for you, Neil. It's amazing. I mean, I, as I was looking at the results, how relatively accurate a lot of the pre-vote polling was here. I mean, if you would, I think it was looking at some of the estimates going in, and they basically thought, the pollsters did, that it was going to come down to plus or minus how it did. Well, Isn't granted, it, it had shifted so much but, in the weeks but, and months But I'm just that. talking about in the last few days. Yeah. Uh, things basically played Set out, out um, the way the way that they did. Does this say anything about the relative usefulness of Iowa as a predictor, given the fact that the evangelicals voted for the evangelical candidate, the independents voted for Ron Paul, and the people who want to actually win the presidency voted for Mitt Romney? You know, Iowa has always been a lousy predictor. I think uh, you know only in a few instances has uh, the winner here, particularly on the GOP side, gone on to become both the nominee and the president. I think we may well have seen uh, one of the few times that it's going to be the case. Uh, and this will, could also be one of the, you know, actually the only time ever on the Republican side, if in the end Mitt Romney does go on next week to win in New Hampshire, that somebody won both races back to back. Um, you know, I, I, I know, I agree with you on the polling. It's really amazing how uh, similar the actual outcome was to what the polling said in the last few days. And they, they were doing entrance uh, polling when people were going into the to the precincts, and, and those uh, things were almost a, a perfect replica of, in the end, what ended up happening. So, which is weird because there were so many people that weren't decided right. going into those polls. Right, and uh, I'm curious to Neil at this point wh what this means for Rick Santorum's future. So he has a strong showing in Iowa, maybe doesn't carry as much momentum in states where evangelical where the evangelical vote isn't quite as important, but he has left a, a mark. And does he, do we expect him to resurface in someone else's uh, sort of campaign or ticket going forward, or what do you think he? Do, how does he handle his own career from here? 
Yeah, it's hard to say. He he could do better than we think. He could have a surge in New Hampshire. I mean, he's down way in the polls at the moment, but he has spent uh, the second m- most amount of time there. You know, he's really shown his stuff. I mean, last night, the speech, I mean, he came out and his, you know, quasi-victory speech was really good speech. It was heads and shoulders above what Mitt Romney came out and said. 